Trebles. I'm Adam Smith-O-Smith and that is Matt Pyman hill And today we're going to look at five players that we think are going to have a big 2021 and rise up those all-important PDC rankings. Let us know which players you will be keeping an eye on or if you disagree or agree with me and Pyman. And if you are here, thanks for being here. Please, can you, uh, if you get a minute, drop us a like, subscribe or comment. We're quite new to YouTube, as you can, as you know, and you know it really, it really does help us out. So, without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Matt Pyman Hill, who is going to tell you his first player to watch out for in 2021. Yeah, cheers, Adam. So, yeah, we try to take um, a couple from the top end of the rankings, some names that you will have heard of, and then maybe a couple lower down that you might not have heard of, but. Um, you know, that's the point. We're all learning together, aren't we? And I'll probably have egg on my face with a few of these. So these boys will be watching this thinking, please don't say my name <laughs> if they've ever watched our channel before. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, first man I'm going to go with is uh, someone you should all be aware of, Gabriel Clemens, the German, currently ranked number 29 in the world. But in terms of potential, I see him maybe breaking into the top 16 this year. I think it's going to be a big year for Gabriel Clemens. And uh, if you're interested, he is currently 100 to 1 to win the PDC World Championship. Now, I'm not saying that any of these players are going to win the Worlds, but it's a good gauge of where they're at in terms of the markets and stuff, how noticed they are and, and how noticed they might not be as well. Uh, so Clemens, well, he established himself as one of the up-and-comers in Dart over the last sort of 18 to 24 months. He's becoming a regular on our TV screens, the big German uh, very softly spoken fella, but uh, he's a big fella, not somebody you want to mess with. But um, he's an absolute power scorer and a, and a joy to watch. He's uh, To compare him to a player, if you haven't seen Clemens, he, he's probably a little bit in the ilk of Adrian Lewis, uh, Jeffrey Deswan, a very smooth 180 hitter. Uh, Dave Chisnell as well, you know, he's almost placing them in the treble 20 when he's, when he's playing well. And he's also got combination finishing on his side. You know, he could take out the big finishes, uh, with real ease and it makes him a very great player to watch and a dangerous player, someone that I'm always interested in when he's playing supposedly one of the big boys. We've been waiting for him to, uh, you know, make that breakout performance, I think. And we got it at the World Championships when he knocked out defending champion Peter Wright in an absolute classic that went to all the way to a final leg um, and he held it together. Unfortunately, he then didn't hold it together, losing out in a crazy final leg to Christoph Ratajski in the last 16 uh, in, in a game which uh, both players missed several match darts before Ratajski eventually closed it out. So I definitely think there's a line of thought that if Clemens had won that match, he probably would have been the favourite to beat Stephen Bunting. Not saying he necessarily would have won, but I think he would have gone in favourite. We could have been looking at a world semi-finalist and he certainly wouldn't be 100 to 1 chance in these markets anymore. So I think a big year coming for Clemens. I think he could make a TV semi or a TV final. Um, and I think that 100 to 1, to be fair, could look big come uh, December. So, yeah, it's someone I'm expecting to push the top 16 this year. Yeah, I think that that, um, that victory over Peter Wright would have done him the, the world of good pie, man, to be honest. I know you've been big on Clemens for a while. And like you say, big big 180. So he's getting the experience more now, particularly in the PDC and TV events, Euro Tour, etc. So, yeah, certainly one to look out for. Um on my list would be Luke Humphreys. Um, in our wrap-up video for the Worlds, I said that he would be one I'd be keeping an eye on. Um, you may wonder why I'm putting up someone that went out in the first round um, of the World Championships um, just in December, just gone to the oldest player to ever, ever compete at the, in a PDC darts tournament, uh, Paul Lim, but uh, vintage from Paul Lim, really. And I thought that Luke Humphreys did very little wrong that day. Um, he's currently ranked 42. Um, I think he could potentially get, a, a, you know, realistically by the end of this year, aim to be in the top 32. And that does make things a lot more comfortable for a player if you're in the top 32 than the 16, obviously. But yeah, you get into you get automatic qualification for a, a lot more tournaments if you're in the top 32. And also, using the Worlds as an example, if you're in the top 32, you come in at the second round rather than the first round. So it's definitely an advantage. Um, he's only 26, Luke Humphreys. Um, he's already got strong foundations there's obvious improvements to be made and it's kind of unexposed is a term we would use in, use in horse racing. You know, there is a lot of potential and, uh, st and development still to come. And he is a, a fantastic product of the PDC development tour. Um, he's the only man to have won that particular order of merit, finished top of the uh, development tour order of merit two years running. Um, so, you know, he's, he's, got, he's definitely got the grounded. Like I say, most recently seen in the world, he got beat 3-2 by Paul Lim, but... He didn't do a lot wrong there for me. Um, 
and the tournament before that in the Players' Championships. He got a good win in the first round. Um, I'm forgetting who that was against, but we backed him. And then he lost out to um, Gerwin Price, and we know that he's on form. He was 10-6 te- to Gerwin Price. It was reasonably close, and then Price, the last few legs, ju- just went away from him. Um, the one criticism I would give Humphreys is that it can sometimes be get a bit jittery and down in the dumps of his doubles. If he misses a couple, you know, suddenly you're looking at five, six, seven. So he's going to need to brush up on that, but you can. Um Made the quarterfinals of the World Championships a year ago. Um, you know that was a, that was by far and away the best uh, performance that that he's that he's done um, on TV in front of our eyes. Um, that year he beat Bunting, Dimitri, and Rob Cross um, along the way, making it to the quarterfinals. And then the, his biggest standout of performance of um, of last year, 2020, came on one night actually. It was a challenger in the Premier League, and he actually beat Gary Anderson. And I don't know the stats off the top of my head, but there's very few challengers have actually won a game in the in the Premier League. It's, it went on for two seasons. Um, he may have been the only winner in last year's yeah. Premier League. I think it's it's not more than three or four maximum. It could be the, it could be the only the only winner. So challengers are the people like um, uh, Fallon Sharrock was a challenger. Um, Aspinall, um, Desjardins, Henderson. So they're the kind of guys that are challengers. So you know not not quite good enough to make the full time Premier League lineup. But yeah, so I think that. It shows a, um, a a belief really from the PDC in Humphreys. He's not particularly a big name or a flashy kind of kind of character, but you know they've they've obviously got him through the development tour, put him onto the Premier League, which is another part of his development. So yeah, like I say, he needs to improve his doubling and staying calmer under those under them pressure circumstances, um, and he will definitely need to improve on the tour events this year if he is to rise up the rankings. He didn't have a great time on the tour events last year. But I'll be having a couple of quid on him at massive odds um, for, for tournaments coming up, possibly the UK Open. He's 150 to 1 for the World Championships at this stage, if that takes your fancy. Yeah, I think I think Luke Humphreys is a really interesting selection because you, you're right, he has got the game. He, he definitely does. He's come through that. Uh, he come through the youth levels of the game at the same time with Dimitri Vandenberg and they were sharing titles and competing in finals and what have you. So we know the calibre of player that he's used to play, and he's got wins over a lot of the big boys. Um, and he and he very rarely looks out of place when he plays these big players. But the reason we don't see him as much is because he lacks consistency. And I think if he can add that consistency, and and it, it's all going to be in the mindset for Humphreys, as you say, he's got the ability. It's just finding a way to produce that and make that his regular performance. And you're right, no way could you put anyone off having a go at him at massive prices in the tournaments because if he turns up in the right mindset and uh, strings a few games together, he can do some serious damage. Um, okay, third player, back to myself, and I'm going to put up Ross Smith. Uh, so Ross Smith currently ranked 40. I think he's another one that can break the top 32 this year. He's a 250 to 1 chance for the Worlds. Uh, Ross Smith is someone you'll know. Um, he's been around a long time. Um Got his Q skill card as as far back as 2012, would you believe, and was in the BDO before that. Uh, so a very familiar name to Darts fans, but perhaps hasn't achieved what he looked like he was going to when first breaking in. Had a few lean years between sort of 2014 and 2017, where he was ranked as low as 160 in the world. But he's just slowly worked his way back up into the 80s, 62 by the end of 2018, 48 by the end of 2019. Finished last year 40th, so... He's on an upward trajectory. He lost a lot of weight. He, he, he was 19 son at one point, Ross Smith. You'd never know it looking at him. He's trim as anything now. Uh, and he just seems in a really, really good headspace. I like all the interviews I'm hearing with him. He just seems um, he seems like he's learned from his errors and learned from problems that have been in his way early in his career. And I definitely think he's someone who can break that top 32. I just think he, he seems to have figured his game out now. Um even at the Players' Championships, I mean, shows that he's a quality operator to qualify for the Players' Championship finals anyway. But to then beat Kim Hybrex and Nathan Aspinall before going out to Damon Hetter in a, in a close affair, you know, that was a very respectable performance. Uh, he was good at the World Championships, beat David Evans in a, in a quality encounter in the first round before losing to Jose de Souza, And he gave Jose a bit of a scare there. You may remember the first two sets, it was one each and it was uh, looking at one point more like uh, Ross Smith was the likely winner, but Jose just about saw him off. I, I just like the trajectory he's on Ross Smith. I, I like the way he's talking and I think a big year awaits for him. 
Yeah, absolutely. I remember the uh, that night because I backed Jose for the Worlds, and I thought, bloody hell, Ross Smith here is you know he's causing me some problems, but uh, Jose got it got it done in the end in, on that occasion. Um, back to me, um, Damon Hetter. If you would have if we would have recorded this video two months ago, you wouldn't have included Damon Hatter in a way because the the, the story the cat was already out the bag the story was already there and um, he, he did come from pretty much nowhere last year the Aussie Damon Hatter and um, was a full time participant in the in the UK um, you know based himself in the UK and was were going to all the tour events and taking some scouts really and he was in the play at home tour he was also taking scouts in the in the real life uh, tournaments as well if you like. Um, and yeah, we certainly want one, one to watch. Um, so much so that he won the recent PDC um, end of year awards. He won the breakout player of the year. Um, that didn't um, equate itself really to the world championships where me and you had a couple of quid on him. Because um, unfortunately for him, he went out at the first port of call against um, Danny Baggish, who, who won one of Pie Man's favourites and, and actually tipped up by Pie Man at the Worlds, one of our uh, rare betting successes, if you like. But mm -hmm. yeah, so Heta, um, you know, it was he's gone back under the radar possibly slightly as a result of that early exit. He didn't take part in the players uh, the recent Masters because of his, um, his his ranking. So so yeah, maybe one you know back that you can get at big prices again in upcoming tournaments. And like I say, he's based himself in the UK now. Got to be a, a massive commitment for him and a big and a big positive you would have thought. Um, um, he's currently rated fifty one. Now, that's quite low. And of the players we're going to discuss today, I think Damon Hetter has got the biggest potential to rise, to, get, to go up the highest, to be the biggest climber in the in the charts, if you like, because this is his uh, second year. So effectively, he's not defending any prize money, if you like. So last year, so this year is kind of a bit of a bonus for him and, and anything that he does earn will, will go straight on to his, to his ranking points. So yeah, um, he's currently 51. I mean, we've got him down as a, easily a top 32 player. If Damon Hetter's not a top 32 ranked player by the time the World Championships comes round at the end of 2021, something has gone wrong, really. Um, he's currently 8-1 to one for the World Championships, if, if uh, long-term betting is something that, that takes your fancy. Um, yeah, we think he's improving all the time and and like I say, he's, de he's definitely, definitely one to watch. Like the cat's already out the bag a little bit. He's already got that award, as I mentioned. But yeah, don't forget Damon Hill. Yeah, well, it would have been easy to just talk about the young up and comers, but I think the the fact that we mentioned Ross Smith and Damon Hetter in this bracket shows it's not always about aging darts. It can just be circumstantial. And I think you have to say with Damon Hetter that if he had won uh, against Danny Baggish and then beat Adrian Lewis, as many were anticipating, I mean, he was yeah. a very popular bet to go very deep in the World Championships. So the fact that that didn't happen, and let's not forget, that was a cracking game against Danny Baggish, went all the way, some brilliant pressure finishing, and Hetter took a little while to get going, but when he did, we saw all of his class and... This is a guy who can mix it with the best of them. He's been beating top 32 players all year long, really. So, as you say, the fact he's not defending that money from two years ago, the likes of, let's say, Nathan Aspinall, for example, won the UK Open uh, just under two years ago. When that prize money goes off your record, you can slide down the rankings and suddenly there's a pressure on you to win more to maintain your position. Hetter won't really have that problem any prize money he gains is just going to shoot him up 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 above these people that are sliding and I think he's a definite runner uh, to get in that top 32 and who knows maybe even higher he's, he's capable the last one I thought it wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be a good video if I didn't put in an absolute wild card uh, someone you may not have heard of but you definitely should have heard of it's Martijn Claymaker the big Dutchman the Dutch giant stands at six foot eight an absolute machine of a man uh, currently ranked 66 in the world. I think he's a potential top 50 player by the end of this year, if not even a little bit higher, to be honest. If he's not in the top 64, I'll quit these videos. I'm very confident that Martin's going to have a, a big, big year. Uh, he's a 500 to 1 chance for the World Championships. Maybe we wouldn't go that keen, but hear me out. He, he's, a, he's a very solid player. Won his two card this time last year at Q School in January and had a fantastic year. Uh, he had a little spell in the BDO where he was still juggling with his job and he decided, he found himself a sponsor and decided he was going to go full-time practicing on his darts when he got his tour card. That paid massive dividends for him. He was getting some very respectable, uh, obviously we had a disrupted year last year with the COVID pandemic, but home tour he was competing, doing okay. And then when it came back to it, the summer series, we saw the potential of Claymaker. He was being put in at massive prices, but he beat the likes of Gerwin Price, Stephen Bunting, Christoph Ratajski, Luke Humphreys across that five-day spell. 
So he's clearly a very capable player. I had high hopes for him coming into the World Championship and then he suffered the heartbreak of testing positive for coronavirus without any symptoms the day before he was due to play his first game. Uh, it put a very emotional statement out after that saying how it had, you know, he, he built his entire year around it. He was devastated and stuff. But I've seen him speak since that. He, he kind of, he, he said he could barely watch the data over Christmas. He was so dejected about it. But um, he's going to use that to sort of channel him on towards another positive year. And I just like the way he goes about his game. He's a, he's a typical Dutch player, you know, like relentless on the trebles, really good counter. So I, I think he'll uh, continue to upset the apple cart. And in the coming uh, Players' Championship event, definitely someone to keep an eye on against the big players. Expect some up upsets from Big Martijn. Like it, fine man. I know you was keen on him before the Worlds and obviously that unfortunate um, withdrawal. So, yeah, like it. Keep your eye out for him. And like I say, typical pine man going looking further afield to get the, to get the insight for you here on doubles and trebles. A um, couple of other na names I was going to mention. Um, yes, well, Boris Kirchmer. Uh, we mentioned mm -hmm. him before the Worlds. Um, he was is the big Croatian who in the players champion uh, the players yeah players championship finals averaged like 108 and I think got beat by Rob by Rob Cross um borderline Michael Smith I think Michael it was Michael Smith sorry yeah. yeah borderline ridiculous what what he was doing that day um didn't didn't replicate that at the worlds unfortunately uh, but yeah could uh, could be a big year for him Kim Hybrex now certainly not a uh, not a uh, a youngster or an unknown um former Premier League player in fact but um. I think there was big signs at the Worlds that he was turning it around. He's had a tough mm. two or three years. Um, he has suffered in the rankings in terms of, he said, even in interview, he said he was comfortable in his position in the rankings inside that top 32. He's dropped out of it. Looked like he was turning it around at the Worlds. For me, that's the best I've seen him for a while. Um, and Ryan Searle, someone who I've per particularly mentioned on this channel a number of times. Um, again, currently outside the top 32. I would, if, the, if he's not in the top 32 by the end of the year, I, I would be surprised going to be training with uh, Gary Anderson, who has told us that uh, a number of times. Um, on the opposite uh, end of the spectrum, Pie Man, uh, I've identified a couple of uh, names that might be going south in the rankings, unfortunately, for them. Um, Jeffrey Dizwan is someone we've mentioned as recently as uh, as uh, last week, um, given his, um, another defeat in the uh, in the Masters. They went out uh, in the first, first, time, first hurdle at the World Championships as well. Um, yeah, he's currently ranked 22, going south. Danny Nopper, another Dutchman, he's ranked 25, also going south. Could have easily gone out to uh, that the South African fella at the Worlds, as I remember oh, rightly. Nice. Yeah, um, and then there is a bit of a theme here. It's not deliberate. Another Dutchman, Watamina, is ranked 26. Um, he's a he's in and out, but he get he he often will go three or four events are doing absolutely nothing and then get to a final of a, of a, of a tour event. So that's why he's keeping his ranking. He actually lost a final last year to Michael Smith at one stage on the tour. So he's vulnerable, but just does enough to stay in the top 32. And Jamie Hughes as well was another one, the Englishman. Um, he's ranked at 27. Yeah, he's, he could be in danger of, of losing um, his top 32 ranking. He got rolled over quite easily again in the Worlds. I don't know if you had any to add to that one, Pima. Um, maybe not in terms of sliding down the way. I think you've covered the uh, the obvious names inside that top 32. And, and it's important to remember that it's not just uh, based on form. The PDC rankings work on the two-year sliding scale. So anyone who's earned money from two years previous loses that money and therefore there was those ranking points uh, two years afterwards. So you've got certain players who've earned a lot of money in 2019. And if they haven't earned as much in 2020, then they really do need to have a big year because all that money starts to vanish. And if you're not topping up your pot with wins this year, that's when you will slide and slide quickly. But it can change very quickly as well. One run in the big events can buy someone some time. You know, if you're in terrible form and then get to a quarterfinal on TV, it's going to do your ranking the world are good. Um, there's there's some players that kind of chip away at the players' championship events with last 16s, last 32s, and that's how they edge up under the radar. And they're the kind of players I like to look for, you know, because they can often go underappreciated in the market a bit. One man I would say would be, would be going up the rankings uh, for sure, Scott Waits. He made the transition over, uh, looked fantastic at the World Championships, um, lost, uh, beat Matt Campbell in an absolute classic and then was very unlucky to lose to Nathan Aspinall, having mismatched darts in a, you know, another one that went all the way. And he's got bags of experience, seems to be loving 
the high standard of the PDC, former BDO champion. I expect him to continue going upwards. Yeah, that's a good shout, Pine Man, to be fair. So, yeah, that wraps up our uh, five to follow in 2021 and some other names in there as well. Let us know in the comments who you are looking forward to seeing or any uh, any ones that we've not mentioned that you can see rising up the rankings in the PDC. So thanks for tuning in and we'll speak soon. Thank you. Thank you.